See what it does for you. In 1927, Barton wrote, What can a man believe? In every human being, whether emperor or cowboy, prince or pauper, philosopher or slave, there's a mysterious something which he neither understands nor he controls. It may lie dormant for so long as to be as forgotten and as repressed as a man supposed as it is dead. But one night he is alone in the desert under a starry night. One day he stands with bowed head and a damp eyes besides an open grave. And there comes an hour when he clings with desperate instinct to the wet rail of a store storm-tossed boat and suddenly out in the forgotten depths of his believing of his being this mysterious something leaps forth it overreaches habit it pushes aside reason and with a voice that will not be denied it cries out to its questioning and its prayer so let me assume that you don't have to cross the healer like jonathan though you can reach out other healers and mentors by emailing them in the back of this book what can you do easy Focus on what you want and make one of your intentions finding someone to help you clear yourself of old beliefs so that you can create a life that you want. Help exists. State your intention to the world and allow it to come to you. I feel it's important to have support from a mentor. It's easy to fall back into the old way of thinking, to feel sorry for ourselves and to play the role of a victim. A vast majority of current friends probably won't even support your desire or create miracles. When I first stated seeing Jonathan, I would visit him once a month. He and I quickly saw the needed to stay in touch at least once a week. Jonathan and I made a pact and said, whenever I am not clear, I am to call him. Then whenever I could let something in life throw me for a tailspin, I would call him. Another woman recently asked me, what if I meant to get clear? What it, what it meant to get clear with my beliefs? Well, I thought about it for a while, and if I could answer it, the imagine came to me as a football team. As one of the players is hurting and upset and feeling neglected and angry because the coach overlooked him earlier and his girlfriend dumped him, that one player can jeopardize or sabotage the entire team success now you like the whole football team if it parts of you the beliefs inside of you are in alignment with no problem you'll attract your wealth but if part of you in belief that you doesn't support your intention it will jeopardize or sabotage you that's why you may had lousy luck at love romance money or health now some part of you doesn't want it but we need to heal that part and when you do you are clear and when you are clear you are free to attract anything that you can imagine are you clear right now how do you know if you're even clear right now? Think of something that you want to have, to do, or to be, and why don't you have it? If your answer is something negative, then you aren't clear. If you say anything except an honest, I know it's the way, I know it's on the way to me, then you probably aren't clear inside with what you want. Another question to ask yourself is, what does it mean that you don't yet have what you want? Your answer to the question will reveal your beliefs. For example, if you say, I have to do such and such first, then you have to believe for what you have to do something before you can even have what you want. If you say, my soul doesn't want me to have this, then you are stating your own beliefs about what you think your soul wants you for you. And if you say, I don't know how to get what I want, then you are revealing your belief that says that you have to know how to get what you want before you can have it. The truth is, nothing means anything in and of itself. You and I apply meanings to the events and call it the truth. But... The meaning reveals of our beliefs, sometimes those beliefs serve us and sometimes they don't. So how to locate your beliefs? Your beliefs aren't that hard to find. First understand what a belief is according to Bruce D. Morsico, creator of the Option Method, a brilliant tool for exploring beliefs. A belief is assuming something to be true, to be a fact. A belief is not cause, it's not created by a choice. A belief about a thing exists is not the same as the existence. The other words, a shirt is not a belief, it's a fact, it's an existence. But saying a shirt is good for your personality, personally or not is a belief. Self-help author Mandy Evans, an option method practitioner, says, Certain beliefs can lead to very bad things. Beliefs can cause stress to your business or life situations. But if your perception of an event that causes on... Your, it's your perception of an event that causes how you feel. Now, there's what happens. There's what happens to you in life, and then there's what you decide it. And then there's what you decided that it meant. Mandy told me over lunch one day. She's the author of the Traveling Free: How to Recover from the Past by Changing Your Beliefs, Changing Your Conclusions or Your Beliefs about the Events in Your Past. She explained, "You could change your way you live your life today. Certain beliefs can really trip us up. Beliefs can be." Shape the way that we feel, the way we think and act. Mandy says that she's an expert in personal belief systems, but you can often can't change those inner systems until you know what they are. She offers a list of top 10 self-defeating beliefs in Traveling Free. Her second book has a way to begin exploring them. As you look at each belief, as you, as you yours ask yourself, you believe it. As she suggests, if you do, then you ask yourself, you believe it. Gently, explore your own reasons for buying into any self-limiting belief. And here are 10 of the top 20 limiting beliefs. Number 1. I'm not good enough to be loved. No matter what I do, I should be doing something else. If it hasn't happened yet, it never will. If you know what I'm really like, then you wouldn't want me. 
I don't know what I want. I upset people. Sex is dirty and nasty. Save it for one you love. Better stop wanting. If you get your hopes up, you'll get hurt. If I fail, I should be bad for the long time and be really scared to try again. I should have worked this out by now. Those are all beliefs. Sometimes you need another person to point out your beliefs. But when my friend Linda and I had breakfast one day, I had hired her to help me in some promotion, she said. I'm afraid some of my friends will be jealous of me. That's a belief, I said. Linda's eyes widened and her face lit up. It is? She asked. It had never occurred to her that the fear was a belief, and belief she could let go of, and she needed another person to shine a light on that belief. Here's another example of what I mean. How to get a new car. The following happened many years ago, but I remember it well. I needed a car. Bad. The only thing driving was an old clunker, and it could only move as you pushed it. Okay, I wasn't that bad, but whenever the car broke down, I broke down. Paying to repair bills, it was killing me. And never knowing that the car could get where I was going was stressing me out. I needed it. I needed help. I called Jonathan because of the fear of my car salespeople from what I once knew of his tactics. I told Jonathan what I wanted. He said, well, what you really want is often under what you say you want. What you're having this new car do for you. Huh? Jonathan went to explain that what we want may be feeling rather than a product. Focus on feeling of what will happen or what will help me get what I really want. And what would I feel if I had a new car? What a mind stopper. I developed a brain squeezing headache just thinking about it. I got off the phone and my head began to throb as if I'd been hit with a sledgehammer. Although I almost never take medicine, I ate a handful of aspirin like popcorn and it didn't help. I went to see Jonathan in person, sitting in the presence of his accepted energy, letting my pain speak to me. I suddenly saw ache between my eyes and a huge black ball of tightly woven thread. Mentally, the thread would loosen and I'd hear a belief. You can't afford a new car. I let it go and another belief would unravel. What would you do if your dad say about the car? And then another one. Thread of belief would slide out. How will you afford it? And then another, and then another, and then another. As these beliefs slowly apart and left, the black ball of the pain got smaller and smaller. Within 20 minutes, the headache was completely gone. I was healed. I was clear. I was happy. Now get this. Although I didn't think that it was really possible, I followed my intuition immediately, went to the car dealership, felt and led the visit consciously. I knew that there was no way I can get a new car. I had never had a new car in my entire life. My credit was lousy, but I let go and I trusted. When I went to the car dealership, a gentleman there helped me look around and then I told him what I wanted. And then he said that I had one car to fit the description. We walked out to the back and there, would, there it was right there. It was perfect. It was gold and beautiful, brand new. Does it have a cassette player? It looked and he nodded. Well, I said, let's do the hard part. Let's see if I can buy it. Step 4. Never lies your goal. One of my favorite spiritual authors is Goddard Neville. He wrote such classics as Out of This World and The Law of the Promise. He was a charming character who seemed to have access to the world most of us don't see. He taught people how to use their imaginal mind, add feeling, and create results. He once said in a lecture, I urge you to use your imagination lovingly on behalf of everyone and believe in your reality of your imaginal acts. If you have a friend who would like you to gainfully employed, listen carefully until you hear his voice and tell you the new position. Feel his hand clasp yours. See the smile of his lips. Use every sense that you could possibly can to bring bear of the imaginal sense and the imaginal scene and persist until you feel the thrill of the reality. Then drop it and let that scene fulfill itself on its outside. You may have noticed that the Neville didn't say that. Just focus on the Im image of your friend getting a job. You also advise you have to hear your friend's voice and feel your friend touch you. You have to feel the thrill and the reality of the scene having taken place. Neville's great contribution to the science of attracting your own reality was the idea that you must first feel the thing that you want as if it's already as if you already had it. I call this Nevilleizing your goal, which is when you feel whatever it is that you want as if you already had it. In one old book I have by Neville, he signed it with the phrase, Assume the feeling of this wish fulfilled. That's the key. That's the secret. Assume the feeling of the wish fulfilled. You have to learn how to nevelize your goal by assuming the feeling of you, that you wish fulfilled. How? Begin right now by answering the question. What do I want to have to be or to do? Now get into the feeling of having already accomplished it. In other words, if your goal is to make 200,000 sales this year, what does that feel like when you consider already having achieved it? You assume the feeling of the intentionally already fulfilled. What a villa is suggesting is that you must feel... Whatever it is that you want to attract, you might see it in your mind, but until you feel it already complete, you will be missing the key step of attracting process. Now, you will be missing a key step in the attracting process. You have to feel it as if it's already complete. This is a step of missing from virtually of all self-help books. His feeling is if it's already complete. This is the step missing most hypnosis, visualization, and other mind-expanding programs. This step four, this is step four in the attractor factor. Emotion has power. Marketing specialists know that people don't act for logical reasons, but 
but for emotional ones. Emotion has power. Emotion has always had the power over the creative what you want. Find within yourself what you feel like to have, be, or to do in the thing that you want, and it will begin to manifest the thing that you want. The energy and the motion will work to pull you towards the thing you want while also pulling the thing that you want towards you. I know, I know, I'm getting philosophical again, but I'm writing about spiritual concepts which few people can relate to, and it's easy to see why. We are taught from the crib to pay attention to reality, to obey the laws of man, to worship books and leaders, while you can help our society run smoother, and actually it hasn't worked, but that's another book. It limits you. Belief in leaders, rules, and outside authority limits you from creating the life you want. I told you, I told a friend, I once told a friend that a belief in a girl can limit her own power to manifest what she wants. You'll see how true this is for me when you read the shocking later chapter on the shocking true story of Jonathan. When you give yourself the power away to anyone else, you are spending your own energy in their direction. Now, if you want to attract wealth and anything else that you need in your own power, you need to own your own energy. You can ask anyone what you think about of any goals, and what the, but at the end, you have to decide. You are the best authority on you. And as my friend Mandy Evans always says, after you read all the books and hear all the lectures, how do you know what is what to do for for you. In short, you have to own your own energy and decide for yourself. This energy is a key ingredient in the attractor factor. A powerful energy. One of the most powerful energies that you can ever experience is gratitude. Feel gratefulness for anything and you shift your way you feel. Feel thankful for your life, your lungs, your home, this book. It doesn't matter. Once you feel grateful, you are in an energy that can create miracles. Jonathan taught me this. I remember going to see him when I was broke and depressed. One of the first things he did was guide me to a realization that I had plenty of my own life, and I had plenty in my life. When you compare your own life to that of other people living in other third world countries, you quickly see that you are living like a king or a queen. You probably have food, water, shelter, as well as a refrigerator, television, radio, and probably a computer. Millions of people don't. Realize that you are blessed with enormous abundance right now. Feel grateful for it, and you will attract even more abundance. Curing illness. My friend Jonathan Morningstar, a completely different Jonathan, once cured himself of a terrible illness with a simple one-line statement of gratitude. Jonathan got double pneumonia. Double pneumonia that nothing, nothing could seem to help him. That was the felt inspired to write down one simple but potent sentence that he repeated every hour, recorded every audio tape, and played back to himself and wrote with the signs and hung around his home. He made this one liner part of everything of his being. Within 24 hours, Jonathan was healed. It was the one line that he used. Thank you, God, for all the blessings that I have, for all of the blessings that I am receiving. Thank you, God, for all the blessings that I have and for all the blessings that I am receiving. Thank you, God. I'm not a scientist, but I won't pretend to explain how this works. Somehow your energy sends off signals that attract more than what you are sending off. Change your signals and you will change your results. Change your energy and you will change what you experience. The energy you give out is the result from what you get. The energy you give out is the results you get. Now the energy you give out will be the results that you get. That's the attractor factor. Again, gratitude can shift everything. Just start feeling sincerely grateful for what you have. Look at your hands or your book or this pet or a pet or anything that you feel love or gratitude for. Dwell on that feeling. That's the energy that can help you manifest whatever you want. And imagine the outcome. Another energy that you want to experience an energy that comes from an imagining of what you will feel like to have, be or do, or the thing you want. This can be fun to imagine the outcome. Imagine how good it will be if you have what you want, to be what you are wanting, to do what you dream, to feel the electricity and electrifying feeling that comes from the images, these feelings that create your life that you want, that you can manifest it for you. Somehow those feelings lead you, guide you, direct you to the things that will make the correct events. The great German thinker Goethe, Goethe may have said it best when he wrote the following inspirational message. Until one is committed, there is hesitancy, the chance to draw back and always ineffectiveness, the chance to draw back always ineffectiveness. Concerning all acts of initiative, there is one elementary truth, the ignorance of which kills countless ideas and endless plans that the moment one definitely commits oneself, then providence moves too. All sorts of things occur to help me that would never otherwise have occurred. The whole steam of events issued from the decision raising in one's favor all manner to unforeseen incidents and meetings and material instances which no man could have dreamed would have come his way. Whatever you can do or dream you can, begin it. Boldness has genius, power, and magic in it. Whatever you move to will have an uncanny way to move towards you. The camera. I was in Seattle once to see some friends one night, and I turned on the television and caught an ending of a fascinating Larry King interview with the famous actor-singer Andy Griffith. And he was talking about some of the first motion pictures he said unknowingly relevant to the attractor factor process when he talked about the director who told him, the camera is just a machine. It picks up whatever you give it. All you have to do is think of something, feel it, and the camera will record it. Then they cut the scene from a movie Griffith, which was referring to when he took the woman 
with a heart full of lust who could tell her from an actor's eyes that it was a projecting thoughts that were pretty hot. Larry King later said, It was one of the most X-rated looks in the movie history. The universe is like the movie camera. Think something and feel something and the universe will pick it up and project it. The advance Andy Griffin was given a young actor as an advice I wanted to give you to this. When you know what you want, all you really have to do is think it and feel it. And that's it. The universe, the spirit, and all else exists will pick up your signal and project it.